I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to this video on the theory, configuration, and troubleshooting of directly connected Cisco routers. In this particular lab, we're going to be using two routers out of one of my racks, and you see the IP addresses that we're going to assign here in a moment. I haven't done any configuration yet, even the IP addressing. And these two routers are directly connected via their serial one interfaces on each router. So we're going to put the IP addresses on. We'll go ahead and open the interfaces. We'll take a look at the defaults. A lot of good information here for your CSENT and CCNA exams. And you CCNP candidates can always use a little brushing up on this too. So having taken a look at the topology, let's go ahead and jump straight into the lab. We're on router one right now. And we'll do a conf t interface serial one. Matter of fact, tell you what, before we even do that, another quick review. We'll do an interface show interface serial one before we've done anything. A lot of information here right off the bat, but you know what we're really interested in right now is that the interface is administratively down, which means of course it is shut down. We've got to open it. And of course, if that is down or administratively down, we know the line protocol, which is the logical state of the interface, we know that's going to be down. Something else of interest to remember that the default encapsulation on a Cisco serial interface is HDLC. We often change that to PPP, the point-to-point -point protocol, or to frame relay in some situations. But here, we're going to leave it at the default. So those are our default settings. Let's go back to the config. Serial 1. We'll just go with that. Let's check our addresses there. 172.12.13.1. 24-bit mask. We'll go with that. And no shutdown, which is usually abbreviated no shut. I'll do a quick save there while that's opening. What should we expect to see at this point then? Once that interface is open, what should we expect to see? Because remember, we haven't gone to router 3 yet. So we haven't done anything over there. We've got a log message there, uh, or a console message, about interface serial 1 changing state to down. So let's use our up arrow here to repeat our last few commands. We'll do show interface serial 1 again. And you'll note that the interface is no longer administratively down, but it is still down. You should expect to see that when you've got a direct connection like the one we're working with here and that we haven't opened the other side yet. So physically, we've still got a problem here. It's down and then logically, of course, it is going to be down as well. If it's physically down, it cannot be logically up and that's what the line protocol is. Let's skip over to router three. We'll just do a quick show interface serial one here. And you can see that we expect to see that it is administratively down, line protocol is down, default is HDLC, which we're going to keep. Three, 255, zero, and we'll do a no shutdown. So I'll do a quick save there. You can do write, you can do copy, run, start, whichever way you prefer. And you see the interface comes up and changes state to up and the line protocol is up. Any time that you're bringing a line protocol up uh, or you see it come up after you open an interface, stick around because it may not stay up. And of course we're not interested in it just going up and then coming right back down, which is what happened here. And you can see by the timestamps, and this is why timestamps are so important, it took about 22 seconds for that line protocol to go down. So now the problem is, and let's run show interface serial one. Obviously we still have a problem, but what is the problem? You can see now that the, the interface is up on router three, but the line protocol is down. So this combination means that physically the interface is fine, logically it's not, there's something missing. And we're gonna go back over to router one and again, always use your up arrows to repeat your, go through your previous commands. And again, you can see physically the interface is fine, logically it is not. 
So the problem here is that we don't have a clock rate because in a directly connected scenario such as this, one of the routers has to act as the DCE end of the connection. And it's the DCE end that has to supply a clock rate to the DTE for that line protocol to come up. So the question now is which router is going to be the DCE? Well, let me show you a little command that will really help you out with that. And don't panic when you see how much information is shown by this command. It's show controller followed by the interface name and number, or type and number, I should say. Again, don't be concerned with all of this because we don't really care about that right now. What we do care about is right at the top, V35 DTE cable. The cable type that we use to directly connect two Cisco routers via their serial interfaces is called a DTE-DCE cable. And it's good to know though, because you can look at the cable and see which end is the DTE end and which end is the DCE end because it's going to actually be embedded into each cable end as to which one it is. But we all know beyond exam questions that may come up, we all have been in router closets and you're looking at all these wires and you just can't see what you need to see. So you better know this command so you can tell immediately which end of that DTE DCE cable is connected to which router. We'll go over to router 3 now and we'll run the same command show controller serial 1 and you can see here's V35 DCE cable and that means obviously this is the DCE end. What we need simply is the clock rate command. Let's see, sometimes you've got to put it in as two words. So we're going to just select 56,000. As you can see, we've got some preset values here that we can choose from. And let's wait. So we've got a clock rate set. And let's wait and see if that interface comes up. You don't need to shut it down and bring it back up but it does take a little few seconds to take effect and you see the line protocol is now up and it took about 14 seconds. You can see 1705 here and then 1719 here. So it looks like we're in good shape. We can do a show interface serial one and you can see that serial one is up, line protocol is up. So that's good. So you know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna send a ping across that connection And there it goes, five exclamation points. It's always what we like to see. And I'll go over to the other side and ping router three from router one. And that's it. So you now know the command to see which end of the connection is the DCE and which end is the DTE. You know that the DCE end has to supply the clock rate. And you also know what it looks like now to see a, a router interface that is administratively shut down. Uh, that is down but not administratively shut down physically and then we saw a common count combination where physically it was up but logically it was down and it was simply because we we're missing the clock rate command. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I've got well over 200 other Cisco practice exams, fully illustrated tutorials, and much, uh, many more videos uh, on the website www.thebryantadvantage.com in the tutorial section and also on the blog and on YouTube as well. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.